Hello, welcome back to the next episode of Cloud and Web Developer. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can restrict and only allow strong passwords when you create a user. And I'm going to be showing you two ways which can actually work side by side, one on the front end and one on the back end. And for the front end, we're going to be using forms in Flask. And for the back end, we're going to be using Flask again. But this time, we're going to be using a library called Password Strength, which is amazing. And I think it's a little bit underrated and underused. So the first thing we're going to do is to open our text editor. And I'm going to start by opening a terminal. And I'm going to be working in this folder called Project. And the first thing we do, as always, we're going to uh, build and activate a virtual environment. And once you're inside your virtual environment, we just need to inta install a couple libraries with pip install flask and pip install password strength. If you want to read the documentation, which I recommend, it's really interesting and it's not really very long. Uh, it tells you how you can actually create a policy uh, which you can take custom made to your needs. So in this case, you can restrict to the amount of characters, uh, how many uppercase, how many lowercase, how many non-letter or special characters. And then on top of that, there's a thing called entropy bits. So how complex is going to be your password? And it assigns a number, a numeric value, which it tells you that a strong password can go from 0.66 entropy bits to 99. So a weak password is anything below 0.66. So for this uh, exercise, we're going to be using 0.66 as a decisive point where you're going to be discerning which passwords are strong enough for you to use and which ones are not. All right. So with that out of the way, let's start coding. And we're going to start by creating a app.py file. And also we're going to be using some Jinja templates. And inside the templates, we're going to be having our base.html, uh, form.html, and uh, success.html. All right, let's start by creating our app.py. So the first thing we need to do is to import uh, the things that we're going to be using. So Flask, Render Template, Request, and Flash. And in a minute, you'll see what this Flash, if you never use it before, what is it used for? It's just to flash messages uh, to the user. And then uh, Password Strength, we are going to be using two things, Password Policy and Password Stats. And you create your application. And this is basically just taken from the uh, documentation, more or less. So it's going to be a password that is uh, eight characters in length. It requires at least one uppercase, one number, and the strength, the entropy bits, need to be over 66. Remember to, if you're going to be using forms in Flask, you need to create a secret key, and it can be anything you want. Just a random string of characters will do. So now I'm going to explain line by line what this is going to be doing. So on line 18, if you receive a post request from the form, then you're going to be grabbing the fields that we haven't created yet, but we will. Uh, there's going to be a field for password, a field for email. And then this is where it gets interesting. You're going to be calling this password stats and you're going to apply it to this variable password that came from the form. And you're going to save that numeric value in this um, variable called stats. And this is where we're going to be checking if it's higher than 0.66 or not. And then if the password is not strong enough, if it's, le if it's less than 0.66, then I want to print in the console how strong was that, that password, just to give us a reference. And you're going to flash this message, password not strong enough, avoid consecutive characters, and easily guess words. Because what happens is that it, you, you can actually uh, have all these met is uh, eight characters in length, has uppercase, lowercase, number, and everything. But if it's something like QWERTY123, it will not have enough entropy bits for it to be strong enough. And therefore, you, even though in the UI it's going to be uh, accepted, on the back end, it's not going to be accepted. And when that happens, you need to tell the user what's going on. And in this case, this Flash, which is this um, library that we imported from Flask, is going to be telling you, the user, what happened there. And when that happens, you just need to re-render the, the, the form, the, the place where we are at the moment. 
If not, if the password string is actually higher than 0 0.66, then you're going to render a success.html form that is just going to have an H2 tag saying that, yes, the password was strong enough and everything is good. And before all this is done, before they even send the, the, the form, you're going to be just rendering the form.html. So notice that indentation is important. So the first thing is going to render is this. And then once the form is posted, it's going to check if the password is strong enough and re-render the template with the message or send you to success.html with a success message. Okay, now let's move on to our base HTML. Now, base HTML is easy. You just do a essentially a, a doc type a boilerplate that is going to have all your meta tags, your title, uh, links. If you want to add any CSS or anything like that, this is where you would add it. And remember, with Jinja templates, you need to have a block content and end block. This is where all the other HTML files are going to be inserting their contents in this block right here. And also, I want to bring to your attention this bit right here underneath strong passwords. And um, this is where you're going to be flashing those messages, those error messages or success messages to the user. So you need to make a space for them in here. And this is how you do it with a for loop. And you have to end the for with end for. Now, let's move on to the form HTML. Okay, so let me go uh, once again, line by line, explaining what's going on here. So first one extends base HTML. So it's going to be adding all this boilerplate code we had before. And then it's going to insert a header block if you need one. And then this is the block content where you're going to be inserting this into base, right? And you are going to have, mm, we actually don't need this message because we're going to have a flash. So just ignore that. Okay, so it's even easier now because now from here, all we need is this form. And this form is going to have an ID called registration. It's going to have the post method, which is important because this is how the uh, Flask endpoint is going to be grabbing the information from it. It's going to have a field for email with its label. It's an input field with its label and it's required. And also you're going to have a password field with its uh, label and input. And in here, this is a way with uh, regu regular expressions that you can actually enforce the front end uh, uh, say restrictions of the password. So in this case, what we're saying is that it has to be at least eight characters. It has to have one um, uppercase, one lowercase uh, password. So if that doesn't happen, you'll see uh, this message will be displayed for the user. And this is this is an easy an easy uh, way that you can filter already right off the bat from the UI uh, passwords that are not going to be good enough. And this is the message that you're going to flash to the user if that's the case. So we'll see this in action in a minute. And then you're going to have a button, a submit button to, to call it registration. That's going to send the information to the endpoint where it's going to be discerned if it's good or not. Now let's go to the final success HTML. And this is a very easy one. So extends base HTML again. And the content is essentially just an H2. It says password is strong enough. Welcome. So it means that the password was indeed uh, higher than 0 0.66 and it should work. So now let's run our app and make sure that at the end of your code in app.py, you have your if name equals main app.run. And if you want to have a hot reload system going on, you need to have debug equals true. Okay, that should do. Right, so now my server is running on a localhost 5000. So let me open a new, new browser. 5000 and I have my email, my password, my little form is working. My strong password title is there. So you, you know, we're reading from base and from the other HTML document, the form HTML. So I'm going to put just a random password here and I'm going to put a password that is very easy, just four characters. So this shouldn't work even before you send to the server. This is where the regex is actually working and it's telling you the error message that we prepared before. So it has to be, uh, where was it? this message right here it must be uh, this long it has all these characteristics for it to work so this one didn't even send the form 
So we need to meet the criteria. The thing is that even if we meet the criteria, for example, I'm gonna write qwerty123. And if you can see it here, it's like qwerty123. And I'm gonna copy it so you believe me. So it's eight characters long. So it has a capital letter and it has lowercase and all that. So that goes to the server and the server actually is the one that says no because it's not strong enough password is not strong enough avoid consecutive characters and easily guess words and if you can see here on my console this is where we print the strength of the password so it's 0 0.266 which is really low it's a really weak password so let's try again now i'm gonna put a very crazily strong password you know with characters it's long i wrote b or somewhere there so let's copy that, just put another bogus email and paste this crazy password. And that one is strong enough and it sends me to a success.html template. And if you want to see how strong was that password, here is 0 0.93. This is crazy strong password. Remember the highest is 0 0.99. And with this form, you, with this way of doing things, you can actually tailor and customize the strength of the password that you need. You know, you might not need 0.66, you might need a 0.5 or whatever, you know, depending on your needs. Uh, if you want a password that is still, you know, easily to remember for your users, maybe you need to lower this number here and then make sure that it's actually not too strict in your re restrictions. And this is one way that you can actually have a double whammy. You are protecting on the front and protecting on the back end. So you make sure that your, your passwords in your site the password that your users generate are going to be strong enough for your purposes. Okay, stay tuned for future videos. I'm doing uh, tutorial videos every week. This is Carlos for Cloud and Web Developer. Have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.